Greetings, all! Today, we will be examining the relatively uncommon dark flying-type Pokémon Volibi, the diapered Pokémon, and its relatively rare evolution Mandibuzz, the Bone Vulture Pokémon. While they might not appear to be the most offensively dangerous beasts out there, the members of the Volibi family are hardy birds that can easily take a hit and dish it right back out against those that are weaker than them in a fight. Volibi possess short, stout bodies with black feathers that cover most of their form, transitioning to a brownish gray at the tips of their small wings and the scruff of feathers that surround their neck. Their lower limbs show that they have pink flesh beneath their feathers, with three gray talons on each of their feet and a beak of similar color as their talons. Their eyes are a bright pink color, matching the tone of their skin, and they have a sprig of black feathers on the back of their head their posterior being perpetually covered by a bone diaper made from the skull of a larger animal. Their evolved form, Mandibuzz, still have black feathers on them, though the scruff of feathers that surrounds the base of their neck has turned a brownish-white color, and the tips of their wings have divided noticeably into a series of individual finger markers, with four on each wing covered in gray feathers. They retain the same number of talents on their feet and the same skin color, but their eyes look more devious in form, and they now have a discernible set of black tail feathers. Lastly, they wear bones for protection and clothing like their pre-evolved form, with the most prominent components being a feather pick that is placed in the sprig of feathers on their head, and a belt or girder of sorts that they wear proudly around their waist. The members of the Volibi family are among the few types of Pokémon for which there are no known male versions, for every single specimen is female. This is only possible because they reproduce via internal cloning, so while they are able to produce offspring with other Pokémon, they are never male, and thus can only ever produce more of their own kind when with other Pokémon. It is believed that this is an adaptation to desert life, as it makes it so these creatures, even on their own, are able to avoid the costly process of sexual reproduction to some minor degree, and, more importantly, can produce more of themselves without having to rely on the process of finding and courting a mate allowing them to focus their energy on survival instead. This works out well for them, as these creatures are scavengers by nature, and will rely on the dead and decaying bodies of other wild Pokémon for food. Though, unlike normal vultures, they are not afraid to attack live prey as well, striking against small creatures like Cubone, which are a favorite treat of theirs, and attacking them viciously in order to make a quick meal out of them. What makes these creatures particularly interesting is that, much like their favorite prey item, these creatures use bones as a tool for both combat and secondary purposes, utilizing them to make the most of their catches and even to build their homes, as their nests are often made from the bones of prey items they have killed and devoured, and are made skillfully enough that they can resist the effects of any terrible weather that their environment might cast upon them. This helps to grant some versatility to them, and in turn makes them a larger threat than most might think, with the bones providing both an extra weapon of war and a powerful defensive shield that grants them higher defensive attributes than one might otherwise expect. This is especially evident in their abilities, as these bones and these creatures' bold temperament can grant them access to the big pecs and overcoat abilities as base abilities, while those that have bone armor that is weaker than normal can also possess weak armor as a hidden ability. In terms of stats, in the case of Mandibuzz, while these birds are definitely a threat to weakened enemies, their mobility is not as great as it could be as a result of the heavier bones that they wear, and their ability to attack directly is not so strong as a result of them primarily relying on scavenging for food, resulting in their base attack, special attack, and speed stats being below average for a fully evolved dark and flying type Pokemon. However, these same issues also manifest as benefits in their other stats, as the bones that they wear provide them considerable defensive strength, and their hardy nature from desert life means that they can take a lot of punishment. As a result, their base HP, defense, and special defense stats are above average for a fully evolved Pokémon of both of their types, in particular, possessing the highest base HP stat out of all non-legendary and non-UB dark type Pokémon. As such, while Mandibuzz might not be able to do much on the offensive, their defensive powers can make them a thorn in the side of others, and ultimately prove to be one bird that won't go down without one heck of a long-winded fight. At their young age, while they might hop around friskily and prove to be surprisingly tenacious, Volibi are not ready to fly, as their wings are simply too small for them to properly suspend themselves into the air, keeping them grounded at all times. 
This does not deter them much though, as they are still able to hunt smaller prey items on the ground, using their dark and flying type powers to make short work of anything they can get their talents on. However, because these creatures are still young, they have a lot of baby fat to them, and this leaves their soft bodies vulnerable to attack by other creatures. In order to protect against this, these critters are dressed by their parents in the bones of former prey items, namely their skulls, with Volibi using them like armored diapers to protect their vulnerable bottom, which is the softest part of their form. Over time, these creatures will go through several sudden growth spurts as they approach evolution, and thus must periodically discard the bones that they wear in order to find a new, larger set for them, doing so the entirety of their long lives before they finally manage to evolve. In the meantime, these birds will hop around and dream of flying high in the open skies, oftentimes trying their best to get off of the ground when playing, even if it ends in total disaster almost all of the time. Thankfully, their healthy appetite makes this weight not so bad, as they can readily grow and become stronger over time, holding their own against most other young Pokémon until they can finally acquire their full power later in life, when they eventually grow too large for any known animal skull in the desert to readily fit forcing them to finally evolve into Mandibuzz. Mandibuzz are far more gifted in the use of bones compared to their pre-evolved form, as these creatures will gladly use the bones of their prey not only as armor that they wear around their bodies for protection and display, though no male Mandibuzz has ever been discovered to support the idea of this display being for mating purposes, but also as a weapon in battle, as evolution grants them the capacity to learn and utilize the unique Bone Rush attack, a move only learned naturally by a handful of Pokemon species, additionally converting their Eevee yield from 1 in defense to 2 in special attack. While they are usually content with scavenging for food amongst the desert environments they live in, these birds are also not afraid to go for live prey either, for if they spot something that they find would be an easy and suitable meal for them, particularly if the prey is in a weakened state, they will swoop down on the prey item from behind them when they are not paying attention, grab them with their talons with enough strength to easily lift an adult human, and hoist them back into the air to their nest of bones, where they will make short work of the prey item. Mandibuzz are quite cunning about this and can be very hard to resist in many cases, oftentimes traveling in groups and circling around larger prey items to attack them with teamwork to make short meals of anything and everything they can penetrate with their sharp beaks. Despite their often vicious temperaments, however, Mandibuzz are noted for being extremely caring parents, and will actively use the bones of prey they have killed to dress their offspring and keep them protected against attack, and will fiercely defend them at all costs if confronted by another Pokémon. This makes these birds surprisingly complex and definitely a lot more than their dark demeanor might suggest, though you would still be wise to not aggravate them if only to avoid the wrath they can inflict with their powerful dark and flying type attacks. Though they might not be the most offensively gifted fighters out there, the members of the Volibi family are still sturdy birds that can definitely prove to be a bit of a wall to get past in many cases. You might have to travel out into the harsh deserts they call home to easily find them, but if you're in need of a defensive fighter that can take a lot of hits and keep right on going, you won't be disappointed by what these creatures can provide. If you find yourself in the middle of their normal habitat though, do yourself a favor and try not to get lost. Not being able to find your way back to civilization might be a problem in and of itself, but you'll likely have even more problems if you find these birds circling around you in the sky or on the ground, as it is a sure sign that you have been targeted to be the next thing they will attack and feed on as soon as you show the slightest bit of weakness. Thank you all for watching this video. It is always an honor to be able to speak with you all on the subject of Pokemon in a way that brings me great joy and happiness in my work. If you would like to keep tabs on past and future work, click that subscribe button, check out my work on DeviantArt, and don't be shy about following me on Twitter, where you can find pertinent announcements on upcoming work before it is officially posted. Links to both can be found in the video description. If you would like to support my work and help Miguel and I continue to produce more content for you and improve upon our presentation, please visit us at my Patreon page, which you can also find a link to in the video description. Yeah, no. With that, I thank you for watching, and I wish you well.